Today's video is brought to you by Audible.com. You can try Audible.com for free for 30 days and also receive a token for any free audiobook you choose. Just head over to audibletrial.com slash smokescreen to sign up. Again, 30 day free trial and one free token for one free audiobook. It's really, really good for those A Song of Ice and Fire rereads. So again, to start your free trial of audible.com, head over to audibletrial.com slash smokescreen. Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome back to another Game of Thrones foreshadowing series video. And let's pick up right where we left off in the last video, season one, episode nine, Baylor. Hey guys, it's Chris, and welcome back to Smoke Screen. So let's jump right in right where we left off in episode 9 of season 1, Baylor. And in our first scene here, we have Rob and the Northern Army riding across the twins after they got permission from Walter Frey. So it doesn't seem like a big deal. It's just a scene of some horses crossing a bridge. You can see the entirety of Rob's army. But the important part here is the transition to the next scene where we see this. So basically you just saw the Starks. You saw the Stark banners and the Stark army. And it switches directly over to Maester Aemon chopping up meat. And of course, that kind of tells us visually what the Starks would actually become, because we do see all this. The Lannisters and their regards. So about half the Starks that we all love from the very beginning of the show kind of become chopped liver. And in our next scene, continuing at Castle Black, we do see John first talk to Maester Aemon, and we hear this conversation. The day should ever come when your Lord Father was forced to choose between honor on the one hand and those he loves on the other. What would he do? He would do whatever is right, no matter what. So he talks about Ned Stark and what he would do. And of course, we know the Honorable Ned Stark would lie if it was to protect his family. And of course, for 14 years, at least in the books, he chose to keep this a secret. And of course, the whole Jon Snow RLJ thing kind of led to Robert's Rebellion, although it wasn't the exact cause of it. The actual cause of the war itself was when the Mad King Aerys II, Danny's father, killed Brandon Stark and his father Rickard Stark. That's what actually set the war into motion. But back to the point, Ned did do what he thought was right to protect Jon. And of course, as a parallel during the same episode, Ned lies again, but this time he pays for it. I come before you to confess my treason in the sight of gods and men. I betrayed the faith of my king and the trust of my friend Robert and seized the throne for myself. And as Maester Aemon and John continue the conversation, we hear this. Oh, we all do our duty when there's no cost to it. Honor comes easy to me. Sooner or later, in every man's life, there comes a day when it is not easy. A day when he must choose. So of course that leads to John making some choices in the years to come, and the first big choice he made as far as duty over love was this. Secret, you know I didn't have a choice. You always knew who I was. What I am. I have to go home now. And also, as kind of another parallel to this conversation, in Season 7, we saw this. You don't need to choose. You're a great joy. And you're a star. So, of course, in Season 7, we did see John tell Theon he did not have to choose, that he was a Greyjoy and a Stark. But, of course, that brings up the question in Season 8, will we see John have to choose, or even make a choice, being a Stark and a Targaryen himself? And then this conversation continues as Maester Aemon tells John this. The gods were cruel when they saw fit to test my vow. 
and waited till I was old when I heard they had killed my brother's son and his poor son and the children, even the little children, when I had refused the throne and he was followed by his son, Aerys. Aemon Targaryen. Now, of course, it also immediately switches over to Danny right after this scene, which is basically telling us, although Maester Aemon seems unaware, that Danny does exist over in Esso. She is the last Targaryen. But it's awful ironic that he's telling this to Jon, who also happens to be his family as well. And of course, later on, this is revealed to us in season six. And along these same lines, John figures out who he is, that Maester Aemon is in fact Aemon Targaryen, who turned down the crown. And this is all built up to RLJ as well, because later on, of course, we do see him in the Tower of Joy being born. And this past season in season seven, we did learn John was actually Aegon Targaryen when we saw this. And of course, as I just mentioned, it did switch over to Danny immediately after Eamon tells John that he has lost his entire family. But immediately after this conversation, we do see a quick scene with Drogo and Danny. Now, the interesting thing here is not necessarily the scene with Danny herself, but right after the scene with Danny, it switches over to this. Sense, but he does have a certain mindless provincial courage. So it immediately switches over to the Lannister flag as we see Tyrion walking towards the tent, and later on in season five, we would see this. Who are you? I am the gift. It's a pleasure to meet you, Your Grace. My name is Tyrion Lannister. So I think this is kind of telling us that Danny is going to build this team as she discovers who she actually is. She remembers she is the blood of the dragon. She makes these plans to actually go to Westeros and take it herself, and that she would meet up with Tyrion Lannister later on for him to become her Hand of the Queen. And finally, as Drogo is about to die and the Dothraki are about to turn on Danny, we see this. Metri boy, me vos. Anna, vos, Zebek. And along this same theme here, as far as the same payoff, we do see this between Miri Mazdur and Danny. Do it. Save him. That is a price. Gold, whatever you want. It's not a matter of gold. This is blood magic. Only death pays for life. And then, of course, this whole death pays for life thing would become a big theme throughout this entire story. But all this talk about blood of the dragon, the dragons are dead, and death pays for life ultimately points to episode 10 when we saw this. All right, guys, that'll do it for this episode. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my executive Patreon Smokestream producers, Paul Scriffin, Ball Guy 10, Lala Gig, Kisa Powell, Mark Joseph, aka The Snow and Winterfell, Marilyn Bentley, Joanna, Anonymous, Doc Holliday, Gaska, Hoonjive, Nikki Snow, Lo Horton, Aaron Hadvig, Dean Bewell, John Kerry, Anastasia, Jason Landers, Rhiannon, Dit Smith, MJW, and Carol Brown. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the support, especially during the off season. You have no idea how it helps while YouTube is going way, way down. Anyway, guys, as usual, be sure to subscribe to get everything and be sure to click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.